Hello, my name is August Pappas, and welcome to my tutorial on how to do hands-free live looping in Ableton 11. I spent a lot of time looking at looping techniques on YouTube and wasn't able to find exactly what I wanted to do. So what I ended up coming up with was kind of a combination of some different people's techniques into something that, as far as I know, I'm something that's unique and new. The artist whose techniques I borrowed, one is uh, this guy called Bink Beats. He makes really cool videos. He's got this one here that explains his Ableton looping technique. It's linked in the description. I highly recommend it. There's another artist called Anomaly who does some really cool stuff in Ableton, used some of his ideas as well. But essentially what my approach to this allows you to do is completely hands-free looping in Ableton. You don't need to push any buttons. You don't need to interact with the software at all while you're performing. And it takes place in arrangement mode, which is this here. So you kind of see things on a horizontal plane as opposed to doing looping in session mode, which is this mode here. Bink Beats, for example, he does all of his looping in session mode. He has to press a button whenever he wants to loop. The way I do it is different, it uses some of his techniques, but on the whole different. So if you want to see how this technique can be used, you can watch a video that my band Nanu made where we record a whole bunch of different instruments all um, without having to interact with um, Ableton at all. And it loops everything automatically, plays it all back um, when we want it to. Lots of effects, lots of different instruments and microphones. And you can kind of get a sense for how this technique can be used. So what you're going to need to make this happen is Ableton uh, Live 11 Full Suite. You can also use Ableton 10. I actually learned this in Ableton 10 and then recently switched to Ableton 11. Either one works. You're going to need a Max for Live plugin. What Max for Live is, is just companion software to Ableton that allows you to make your own custom plugins. And then there is a free plugin on Bink Beats website called the Bink Looper that you are going to need to download. It's completely free. It's at binkbeats.com forward slash Bink Looper. And between that and Ableton's native looper. That's all you need to make this technique work. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do to get started here is to load Ableton's native looper onto an audio track. And then also I'm gonna load the Bink looper, which is right here. And so we've got both of them working in tandem on the same track. And what's going to make this all work is automating different parameters between these two plugins at the same time. The thing that makes this work really well is that we're going to be able to automate which of these channel strips between our audio tracks and our MIDI tracks. We're going to be able to automate the record arms, which is this red recording button down here. When you press it, it turns red. That means that only this track is recording. If I press this one, this one's recording now. But what the Bink Looper is going to allow us to do is switch between different channel strips and a record arm, whichever one we want at the time. Without the Bink Looper, unless I'm missing something, without the Bink Looper, it's impossible to automate these record arm buttons. If you right click on them, there is no automation option. So we are going to switch to arrangement mode. We are currently on our Kalimba track. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you how to turn on the kalimba track with automation and then start it looping at uh, whatever time you want to. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the bink looper in our effects rack here. We're going to go to this arm button that says on here. We're going to right click that on button and we are going to press show automation in new lane. Okay, so now on our kalimba track, we have this red line here that is the automation for our bink looper, turning our um, record arm on this track on. And let's go ahead and make a point at measure five here. It's going to say reset. What we want to do is turn that up to on. So at measure five, this mic turns on. And let's switch this to off instead of reset. So if we go to the beginning of the song, and let's turn our metronome on here, and we press play, we'll notice that at the beginning, the kalimba track has not been um, turned on yet. And when we get to measure five, uh, the microphone will now be listening for the kalimba. So if we hit play, we'll 
watch that record arm turn red when we get to measure five. There we go. So now that microphone is listening to that specific uh, track, or excuse me, that track is listening to that specific microphone. And the next step is for us to get our looper automated. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to this square here with our stop button on it. We're going to right click on that. We're going to go to show automation in new lane. And now we've got a new lane of automation here that is controlling the state of Ableton's looper here. I'm going to make this a little larger so it's easier to see. Same with this one. Okay, so what I'm gonna have it do is have it start recording when I start playing. And let's see, let's say four bars later at measure nine right here, I'm gonna have it play back whatever it's been listening to. Okay, so we've got four bars of silence at the beginning. We start playing in the fifth bar the the looper here is going to listen to what we play and it's going to start playing it back here and what i'm going to do is when it starts playing it back i'm going to turn the record arm off because we no longer need to be listening to the microphone because it has recorded what we want it to and it's time for it to play okay now let's see how this actually works i'm going to play something on kalimba something simple um, and we're going to hear how Ableton's going to listen to it and play it back with a looper with our mic turning on and turning, or excuse me, our record arm turning on um, and off when we want it to. Okay, so I'm going to hit play, wait for four bars, play for four bars, and then we'll, we will hear Ableton play it back and start our loop on the ninth bar. playing back I'm no longer playing and we're off and running with our loop okay so we've got one track looped and notice that because we've automated our record arm off here this channel strip is no longer listening to the microphone and we can go ahead and add something else in on a different channel strip so I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this one for now let's do some claps Okay, so we are going to want to load in our bink looper and looper onto our track that we're going to be doing some claps on. There's our bink looper. Let's get our native looper as well. There we go. Okay, now we know that our kalimba track is turning off its record arm at, let's see, measure 9. Um, I'm going to set a marker there so it's easy to keep track of. Markers are going to be super helpful. So let's give ourselves about four bars of break. Um, so we have time to set the kalimba down and get ready for our next part while the loop is playing back. I'm going to set another marker here. We'll call this clap. And here's what we're going to do. On our clap track, we are going to automate our bink looper record arm. Uh, let's see right here and on when it's time to do the claps we're going to turn the record arm on keep this off here okay so now our clap will be listening or the clap track will be listening starting at measure 13. let's go ahead and automate our looper uh, let's see show automation in new lane just like we did on the other one we're going to have it set to record when the mic turns on and let's give it four bars and we'll hit play um, after four bars so it's going to loop uh, whatever i clap into the microphone for four bars and then when we get to here um, it's going to play it back remember to turn off our record arm on the clap track so when the looper is done recording and it starts playing, that mic no longer needs to be listening. So we turn it off at bar 17 here. Let's go ahead and go back to the beginning. Uh, we're going to put down our kalimba track, wait four bars, then put down our clap track. So I'm going to hit play here. Let me get my kalimba ready. Okay. All right. 
like set the kalimba down, put our claps down. Okay, so now both tracks are playing at the same time and we are off and running. Okay, so there is a function on the looper you can use called overdub. So we've got record here, we've got play, and then you can also move it up to overdub, which allows you to record multiple tracks in the same channel strip, which there's nothing wrong with doing that. The cool thing about having these on separate channel strips though, is I can start to get really creative with the effects that we can use. Um, for example, on this kalimba track, I'm gonna, let's just put a delay on it so we can kind of see some of the stuff we can do. Let's go back to where our kalimba plays and listen to what that sounds like. All right, I'm gonna tweak some of these parameters a little bit. And the nice thing about having these separate is that it's only happening on the kalimba track. It's not gonna hap happen on the claps. Okay, so we've got two different audio tracks going here, kind of with their own different characters. Let's talk about adding things in MIDI. We want to play a MIDI instrument. Um, I've got these two MIDI instruments loaded up here. This is a bass sound. We can try this out. Essentially, the process is really going to be the same. We're going to want our bink looper. Uh, let's load that guy in. And then our normal looper right here. And then we just want to keep track of when we want those instruments to enter. Uh, let's see this played for four bars. So let's give us ourselves another four bar break. One, two, three, four. Let's set a marker at measure 21. And we will call this bass. And that's where our bass is going to start playing. I'm going to call this kalimba. Okay. Oh, I need to move this back here, don't I? Okay, great. We've got our kalimba, we've got the clap, and our bass part. So we need to do the same thing we did earlier, except on our MIDI track now, show automation a new lane on our record arm. And we need to turn it to on when we're ready for a bass part. Let's do the same thing. Let's give it four bars, and then we can turn it off again. And while that's happening, we're going to automate our looper uh, right here. Let's make sure we turn this to off first. OK, we're going to automate our looper to record um, and then play after four bars. One quick little tip here for when you do MIDI tracks, try turning on your record arm like a bar before you actually need it. Because sometimes, sorry about that, sometimes if you don't hit the entrance exactly perfectly, the MIDI instrument will not make sound. And so if you turn on the record arm a little bit sooner, you'll make sure that your instrument is ready to go when you play on the downbeat. Okay, I'm going to hit play. We're going to do all this together. And our effects that we added to the kalimba, I believe, will be playing live. So you will hear those in real time. All right, get our kalimba ready. sloppy, but we'll just keep going. Here's our claps. Okay, now our MIDI bass. Here we go. That's the general idea. As you can see, arrangement view here starts to almost work as like a linear score, like a piece of music where you can kind of read what's happening um, on a timeline. But just looking at all the automation, you can kind of see which instrument is being recorded at what time. And this can kind of just work as a launching point in terms of how to do like a live set using looping. And one amazing thing about Ableton that 
you'll be able to use and explore is just how much is automatable in Ableton. For example, you can do things like automating the tempo up here of the song. Uh, you can see show automation in new lane. You can automate all the effects and all the parameters of those effects on your plugins that you load in. And it's really just a uh, an unlimited amount of creative possibility that you can do uh, with this technique. So uh, thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and uh, enjoy looping with Ableton.